In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's about this time of year that parishes receive new parish priests, and a few friends of mine are just becoming parish priests. Often when a new priest arrives, he's very nervous and unsure what the first thing he's going to say to the parishioners is going to be. It's very interesting to consider the first Sunday Mass sermon that was given by St. Jean Riviani. You may know that he's a patron saint of parish priests. I was reading his one of the many good biographies about him this week. And it struck me that he arrived in his parish and then he visited the people during his first few days there. He got to know them a little bit, quietly entered their homes and heard about their lives. And I think they got the impression to themselves, oh, he is quite a gentle character. He's very pious. He won't give us too much of a problem and he will just stay in his church and say his prayers. And then, the first Sunday, this is what he said to them after reading the gospel. Christ wept for Jerusalem, and I weep for you. How could I not weep, my brothers? Hell exists. I am not the one who has invented it. God has said it. And you don't think about it. And you are doing everything you need to in order to send yourselves there. You do a huge quantity of things that are offensive to God. Do you think perhaps God does not see you? He sees you just as I see you, my children, and you will be treated with the consequences. What horror! Hell exists. I urge you to think about hell. Do you think your parish priest will leave you to carry yourselves there to be burned till the end of time? End of quote, St. John Riviani, patron saint of parish priests. As I said, many new parish priests would think, let's say a few jokes for my first son, on my first Sunday and, and ease things in. But Vianney, he saw the urgency of the situation in a way that I guess most of us don't, pretty much all of us don't see the urgency of the situation. The heart of St. John Riviani was, um, I think we could say it was very much in tune with God's will because as strong as his words sound and as shocking as they are, Our Lady will say nearly the very same words a little less than a hundred years later. The message of Our Lady at Fatima. Whether you like it or not, Our Lady at Fatima was obsessed with the real possibility of damnation the threat of damnation. It is everywhere in the Fatima message, in the Fatima sequence of apparitions. I was thinking to myself, I was fortunate enough to be in Fatima this last week, and I was thinking, you cannot do a spin job on Fatima. You cannot do a kind of PR thing to kind of, you know, represent it, represent it for a modern, a modern world that doesn't want to hear about these things. Because, essential, because basically, hell features everywhere in Our Lady's apparitions at Fatima. I, I did think of a long list of different points in the message where it comes up, but obviously the most striking is the vision of hell that the children are given. You have seen hell, the place where poor sinners go. 
And if you've been to Fatima, you'll see there's that, that kind of unusual place where the candles are burning. And some people really don't like that, that there are, people just chuck candles in this fire area. And a lot of people don't like that. But I remind um, my pilgrims that that location where the candles are burning, that's the location when Our Lady opened her arms up and a ray of light kind of broke the ground open and they were able to see hell, it's in that location where that fire is going on in Fatima. And I approached it last week and it is, it's very hot. You can't get too close to where those, those candles are burning. Let me quote the section from Sister Lucy's memoirs. The rays of light seemed to penetrate the earth, and we saw, as it were, a sea of fire. Plunged in this fire were demons and souls in human form, like transparent burning embers, all blackened or burnished bronze, floating about in the conflagration, now raised into the air by the flames that issued from within themselves with great clouds of smoke. Now, now falling back on every side, like sparks in huge fires, without weight or equilibrium, amid shrieks and groans of pain and despair, which horrified us and made us tremble with fear. The demons could be distinguished by their terrifying and repellent likeness to frightful and unknown animals, black and transparent like burning coals. They saw this. Our Lady showed the children this. It's often not recorded, well, it's not recorded in the messages, but this vision so struck the children, particularly Jacinta, some of you may, may be aware of that, that often she would be found on her own, just kind of concentrating, and Lucy would ask her, well, what are you thinking about? And she would say, I'm thinking about what we saw. I'm thinking about that vision and how horrible it is. Um, she was absorbed in that awful reality. Often people will say, don't mention this possibility of hell. It's too awful. It's too shocking. Surely we, we can't believe that anymore. But you know, the world hasn't actually changed much in this regard because people were saying exactly that same um, response in St. John Riviani's day in, 18, in the 1820s when he gave that sermon. And they were saying the same thing in 1917 when our mother in heaven uh, gave the children this vision. There's never been a time when hearing of the reality of the possibility of eternal damnation has been comfortable. It's always been disturbing and frightening. It's a central aspect of the gospel. It's a truth of the Catholic faith. And the message of Fatima, which the day with Mary exists to promote, is inseparable from this truth. Our Lady said, in order to save sinners from this horrible, this horrible reality, this horrible possibility and likelihood for many individuals, Our Lady said, in order to save sinners, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. Our Lady gives the warning of the greatest danger in graphic detail and then she outlines the way we can be saved from this fate for ourselves and how we can help save others devotion to her immaculate heart god have, god could have chosen some other means you know he could have done obviously um, maybe he could have given a different message about how we should escape from hell and, and the, the dreadful possibility of hell. 
But the message Our Lady gives at Fatima is that the Immaculate Heart is the solution. So we can kind of synthesize the entire message of Fatima into this kind of key paragraph. Hell is such an awful reality. Souls are falling into hell on a daily basis. Very ordinary people, they are sending themselves there. Rich, poor, beautiful, ugly, fit, thin, 90-year-olds and 12-year-olds. They are sending themselves there. But to prevent the continued falling of souls, in order to stem the tide, in order to save people and ourselves from this consequence, the Immaculate Heart of Mary is the answer. Following, living, fostering, embracing the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is the salvation strategy. This is the means. Let's just all stop and take that in a second. After showing the children the vision of hell, Mary said, You have seen hell, the place where poor sinners go. To save sinners, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. It's, it's completely connected. The two points that I've mentioned are connected fundamentally in the, in the message of Fatima. And you know, I don't think the church has taken that seriously. Maybe I'm a bit of a rebel. But I, I don't think the church has taken that, that little phrase. You have seen hell. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my immaculate heart. What I see when I look around is pl our plans and strategies, all these man-made efforts to try and, I don't know, convert people or keep people in the church. A lot of strategies, a lot of um, documents and synods, all these things. And I'm sure they, they have their place, but really they all need to be connected to the strategy that has been given at Fatima. Devotion to the Immaculate Heart. Everything in the life of the church should be somehow connected to increasing devotion to the Immaculate Heart. If the church exists to save people from hell, and it does, then why isn't everything connected with devotion to Our Lady's Immaculate Heart? The biggest crisis in the world is this, the continual damnation of souls. The crisis is not CO2 emissions, it's not migrant boats, it's not ULEZ, it's not the war in Ukraine. As Catholics, in our mind, at the forefront of our mind, we're people that believe in Our Lady's message of Fatima, at the forefront of our minds should be this reality of damnation and that the Immaculate Heart is our strategy. Somehow, and we all need to figure this out, and I'm maybe, maybe going to talk about that a tiny bit. Devotion to the Immaculate Heart has to be the answer. Immaculate Heart should always be on our lips and in our hearts. That, that image of Our Lady revealing her heart to us, it should be there constantly. And what does that look like? Well, first and foremost, it is living the rosary living the rosary because the rosary is the principal sign of devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I've thought about the message of Fatima quite a lot and I've come to see that the rosary is the principal sign and means of devotion to the Immaculate Heart. And that makes sense because at every apparition in Fatima, Our Lady commends the rosary to be prayed every day. Uh, and she said that devotion to the Immaculate Heart is the central message of Fatima, and she's saying pray the rosary every day. 
It seems to be that, that that's the primary means of devotion to the Immaculate Heart. And that's because by praying, by living the rosary, not just rattling it off once, you know, once a week or once a day, but living it, by living the rosary, your kind of heart merges with Our Lady's heart. You see the world as she sees it. That's the whole point of the rosary, I think. A lived out rosary is a kind of mental training and, and it's a spiritual transformation. As you say the rosaries, as you see the world as Our Lady sees it, and as you reflect back on her life and our Lord's life from her point of view, your heart is schooled to imitate her heart. That's the primary means of, of this devotion to the Immaculate Heart. The second is by wearing the scapula, because the scapula is like a visible outward manifestation of, of um, this inner desire of being, being uh, clothed in Our Lady, and particularly in her purity and her holiness and all her, basically her, her heart, her, her will. That's manifested externally by wearing the scapula. And then third, I would say maybe the third sign of devotion to the Immaculate Heart, which is needed to save people from hell, is by being a Marian missionary. Because Our Lady said that devotion to the Immaculate Heart needs to be, needs to be spread. And that doesn't just happen solely through us living out the rosary and wearing the scapula. There has to be uh, there has to be some sharing of this with others. And that means, that means things like joining apostolic groups like the Legion of Mary. You're blessed, as, you're blessed to have a presidium of the Legion of Mary in this parish and in many of your parishes. Becoming a promoter of the Day with Mary, not just attending it when it comes around once a year to, to your parish, but promoting it encouraging your friends in other parts of London to attend the Day with Mary so that they can be immersed, they can be schooled in devotion to the Immaculate Heart themselves. And also things like supporting rosary groups, supporting statue visitation groups going from different houses in the parish, um, and basically on a personal one-to-one -one basis of of sharing Our Lady's motherhood with others, uh, showing it to them, teaching them the rosary, fostering in them a devotion to the Immaculate Heart. We must be convinced of the danger, the awful and certain reality of the possibility of separation from God and all that is good in hell and the pains that accompany that. And likewise, we must be convinced of the solution, the privileged solution, devotion to Our Lady's Immaculate Heart. Ave Maria. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen.